The first rule of blogging is have a, a catchy title for each post. So the Centers for Disease Control posted this one. Preparedness 101 Zombie Apocalypse. It instructs readers on what to do to get ready for an invasion of flesh-eating zombies. The CDC says they're actually the same preparations you might make for a hurricane or tornado. You stock up on food, water, medicine, duct tape, a battery-powered radio. Also, you know where you would go and who you would call if zombies start appearing on your doorstep. So, so are they saying? Are they actually telling us zombies exist? The, the CDC? No. The idea is to get you to read the blog on how to prepare yourself in any disaster, which may include zombies, because right. you never know. Just because we haven't seen one yet. Right. You know, this is baloney. We've been doing. We've been teasing this story for yeah. two and a half hours. There's no zombies. It's just telling you to pack duct tape. It's just not telling you there's not zombies. That's right. Though. Don't be such a skeptic. Yeah. I don't know which chapter the alien preparedness is in. Yeah. Uh, oh, Willie Gaunt was here uh, about a half hour ago and had a foot Get race. Zombies. With... We're following a bizarre and disturbing story out of Pakistan about a very gruesome murder of a man allegedly by his wife. Our Reza Saya joins us now from Islamabad. So, Reza, this seems like something out of a horror movie, but it's very real. A woman trying to cook her husband's body parts. What happened? Yeah. Well, oftentimes we use the word shocking in TV news and it's overused, but I think that this time it fits the bill. It doesn't get any more grisly than this. According to Pakistani police, 32 year old Zainab Bibi from Karachi, Pakistan, drugged her husband, then hanged him, then proceeded with the help of her 22 year old nephew to cut up his body into 51 separate pieces. But it doesn't end there. According to police, then she proceeded to cook her husband's body parts. Police say she didn't want to consume her husband's body parts. She wanted to get rid of the body parts without being caught. She thought this was the way to do it. It didn't work. According to police, neighbors smelled a putrid foul order. Uh, they, they called police. Police arrived at her home. We spoke to an investigator who was on the scene. He said he walked in and saw Zainab Bibi with the whole bunch of pots and pans on her stove, uh, cooking up her husband's body parts. Needless to say, Frederica, they took her away to jail. They took her uh, nephew away as well. She's awaiting uh, murder charges along with uh, some other charges as well. And why, Reza, is she believed to have done this? Yeah, a Pakistani television station actually did a jailhouse interview with her, and she told this television station that this was her second husband. She had a daughter from her first marriage, and apparently the husband wanted to divorce her and marry this teenage daughter. Obviously, she was uh, incensed. Uh, in that t television interview, she wasn't remorseful. She wasn't sorry. She said, I did the right thing. He deserved it. Uh, she said that I killed him before he could get his hands on my daughter. South Korea reports seizing thousands of smuggled drug capsules containing an unusual added ingredient, the powdered flesh from dead babies. Some people believe they can cure disease. The Korea Customs Service says they were made in northeastern China from babies whose bodies were chopped into small pieces and dried on stoves before being turned into powder. But they wouldn't say where they believe the babies came from or exactly who made the capsules, citing possible diplomatic friction with Beijing. The contents, though, were identified by scientific testing. When we analyzed it, the powdered material sequence is better than a 99.7% match with a human DNA sequence. No one's been reported ill from ingesting them, but scientist Shin Ul Gi warns they have the potential to be dangerous. We also see superbacteria and other germs and viruses harmful to a person if consumed. Some of the capsules were carried in luggage. Others were sent by international mail. The smugglers told customs officials they believed the capsules were ordinary stamina boosters and didn't know the manufacturing process. One official said no one's been punished, but a customs clearance director at Incheon Airport warned consumers should be careful about health food supplements where the ingredients aren't clearly marked. Karen Sloan, The Associated Press. Last week, uh, a 37-year-old Joppa man was reported missing from his home. Investigators started a missing person search and yesterday ended up uh, doing a, executing a search and seizure warrant on a home in the 500 block of Terrapin Terrace. Inside, they found uh, the remains of the victim. It was identified as uh, Kujo Agye Cody. Uh, they have arrested a 21-year-old 
Morgan State University student named Alexander Kinyow. According to charging documents, Kinyow admitted that he had eaten the victim's portions of the victim's brain and heart, and investigators found his head and his hands in metal tins in the home. Uh, Kinyow has a bail review hearing today in Hartford County District Court, and police have scheduled a press conference for 3 p.m. Terrifying discovery in a Hartford County neighborhood. Body parts strewn across two different blocks. Tonight, detectives say they could be linked to a missing man. WJZ was first on the scene. Megan McCorkle is live with new details just in from investigators. Megan. Denise, police served a search warrant this morning at the home of that missing man. Inside, they made a gruesome find. Disturbing discovery. Parts of a human body found at this home along Terrapin Terrace in Joppa Town. It's very scary, especially knowing that it's so close to, to home. Police came to search the house where Kujo Bonsafo Ajayi Cody lives. The 37 year old vanished without a trace from his home last Friday. It was here detectives found a horrifying scene. They were able to locate evidence of a crime to include human remains. Even more evidence discovered just blocks away. Police say they also found body parts inside a dumpster here on church property along Trimble Road. It's very sad. It um, makes me want to pray for the family members of the person who was deceased. Members of Town Baptist Church arrived to find services canceled for the night as forensic technicians combed through the church dumpster searching for evidence. That's what you see on uh, True TV. Mm -hmm. The crime scenes on True, T True TV. You know. You just don't expect to see it in, in your own backyard. Police say a suspect is in custody, charged with first degree murder, but neighbors' nerves are still frayed. My heart kind of kind of dropped, so this is like shocking to me. A shock that a horrifying crime happened just a few doors down. And police have just released the identity of that suspect. He is 21 year old Alexander Kinua, and we've learned that he has the same listed address as that missing man. Reporting live, Megan McCorkle, WJZ Eyewitness News. All right, thank you, Megan. The medical examiner will need to officially identify the remains that were found, but police strongly suspect they belong to the missing man. First at 11, a man is fighting for his life after he was reportedly attacked and his face half eaten by a naked man near the MacArthur Causeway. When police arrived on this truly bizarre scene, they say they were forced to open fire on the alleged attacker and kill him. CBS 4's Tiffany Helper joins us live from Jackson Memorial Hospital, where the victim is recovering. Tiffany, this is truly odd and, and a very disturbing story. What do you know? Cynthia, certainly a first for me in my career. You know, police sources are telling me that the man rushed here to this hospital, had no face left, that he was completely unrecognizable after this attack, an attack that the city of Miami police are not officially giving us much details about as they try to put the pieces together of this bizarre puzzle. One police source says it's the most gruesome scene he's ever been at. A crazy case that ended with one man shot dead by police and another one hospitalized. CBS News sources and a Miami Herald news report says it started with two naked men fighting near this MacArthur Causeway exit right next to the Miami Herald building. Investigators say a witness called 911. When the cops arrived, sources say one man was chewing off another man's face, ignoring police orders to stop. Now, uh, during this confrontation, an officer did discharge his weapon, striking uh, one of the individuals. But sources say that single bullet was not enough to stop the man from attacking the other's face. They say the cops had to fire several shots to finally stop that man. That individual has lost his life right now. Medics rushed the other man to the hospital, leaving behind a strange scene that shut down this exit at the causeway and backed up westbound traffic all the way to Alton Road on the beach on this busy Memorial Day weekend. Now, I also spoke to Javier Ortiz from the Miami Police Union, and he tells me that that officer on the scene had absolutely no choice but to fire his gun in this case. We're live in Miami. Tiffany Helbert, CBS 4 News. So disturbing and hard to hear. We'll learn more details tomorrow, I'm sure. Thanks for that, Tiffany. Excuse me. On the left over here, we have individuals who are religious fun fundamentalists, religious fanatics. And this is the expression, uh, RT-PCR, real-time PCR uh, expression of the VMAT2 gene. Over here, 
I we have individuals. In so so, so let, let me complete. So over here, we have uh, individuals who are not particularly uh, fundamentalists, not particularly religious. And you can see there's a, a much reduced uh, expression of, of this particular gene, the, the VMAT2 uh, gene. Uh, another evidence that, that supports our, our hypothesis for the development of, of, of this um, approach. Uh, so what you're what you see here is by, by, by spreading this virus, we're going to eliminate individuals from donning on a bomb vest and going into a market and blowing up the market. So our, our hypothesis is that these are fanatical people, uh, that they have overexpression of the VMAT2 gene and that by vaccinating them against this, will eliminate this behavior. Uh, so we have some, some very, very uh, remarkable data in this next slide. Uh, here we have two uh, brain scans. These are fMRIs. Uh, these are two different individuals with different levels of expression of VMAT2. Uh, on top uh, is an individual who's a religious fanatic and individual, and we've repeated this numerous times, that, that uh, has uh, high levels of VMAT2. Now, um, this individual down here who had low levels of the VMAT2 gene, this individual would uh, self-describe as, as, as not particularly religious. In, in each case, uh, these individuals were, were read a religious text. Uh, this individual uh, light lit up um, this, the right middle frontal gyrus uh, shown here, and uh, that's a part of the brain that's associated with theory of mind. Uh, it's a part of the brain that, that uh, has to do with intents and, and beliefs and, and desires. Uh, in contrast, in marked contrast, here's an individual who would uh, not particularly uh, self-describe as, as religious. And when they're read a religious text, <clears throat> what you see is that this part of the brain called the anterior insula lights up. This is a part of the brain that's associated with, with disgust or displeasure on hearing something. Uh, so you're suggesting I take a CT scan with me when I'm uh, evaluating people to determine whether I put a <laughs> bullet in their head? So, so um, the, the data that I'm presenting here uh, supports uh, the, the concept that, that we're proposing. Uh, and I think that uh, we would not propose to do uh, CT scans or fMRIs on, on individuals out in the hinterlands of, of Afghanistan. The virus would immunize against this VMAT2 gene, and that would, would have the effect that you see here, which is it's essentially to turn a fanatic into a, a, a normal person. And we think that will have major effects in the Middle East. How would you suggest that this is going to be dispersed in aerosol? Well, so, so the, the present uh, plan and the tests that we've done so far um, have used uh, uh, respiratory viruses, uh, such as flu or or uh, rhinoviruses, and uh, we believe that that's a satisfactory way to get the exposure of the largest uh, part of the population. Most of us, of course, have, ha have been exposed to both of those viruses, and, and we're, we're quite confident that, that this will be a, a, a very successful uh, approach. This is fascinating. What's the name of this proposal? Yeah, so, so the name of this project is FunVax, which is the vaccine for religious fundamentalism. And you have a proposal already? The proposal uh, has just been submitted. And I think that the data that I have shown you today would, would support uh, the, the development of, of this project. And we think it has great promise. The Russian military has announced plans to develop a new zombie gun. The gun attacks the brain and can essentially make the receiving victim insane. Russian President Vladimir Putin is a supporter of the gun, saying, it can be used for achieving political and strategic goals. The gun is said to use electromagnetic radiation, the same type used in microwaves. And Putin feels it will be comparable to nuclear weaponry. For many years, countries have attempted to design guns that could attack an enemy's nervous system. The zombie gun is intended to attack and short-circuit the main function of the brain, making the target state turn into that of an infant, or worse, a complete vegetable. Armies around the world have deployed or experimented with all sorts of unusual weapons. There was the exploding rats weapon by the British military in World War II. The idea was to fill a rat's carcass with explosives and put a bunch of those through the coal supply. Unfortunately, Germans discovered them in the first attempt. 
Another one was the puke light from the Department of Homeland Security. When pointed to a target, it was supposed to lead to nausea and vomit.